welcome to episode 8 of the Tales of Crisis. Myself, Martin Swaffield, your host, and as usual, our co-host, James Chalmers. Good evening, Chalmers! Good evening, how's it going? I'm very well, thank you. Enjoying the world of Marvel. And your good self? Uh, ditto, yeah. I'm kind of, uh, I can't get enough of it. I need a kind of intravenous drip into my veins for it. So, uh, yeah, absolutely loving it at the minute. So I can't complain. Excellent. That's the, that's the way we would like to be. So we've got a jam-packed episode for you all tonight. So we'll get straight into it. What did you think of the mini extravaganza 2? Gambits here. That's all that I care about. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I said it on episode one, give me Gambit and I will be more than happy. Um, yeah, the moment he was revealed, uh, it's made it a win for me. No, I, everything that came out of there. We've got X-Men Wave 2. We've got um, Juggernaut for the Mutants. Um, yeah, it was absolutely amazing uh, i think some some good little changes there and some new new additions as well yes um no I, I thoroughly enjoyed it i haven't watched as many of it as much of it as i would have liked and I, i'm still going back and watching bits when when i get a chance um but i would highly recommend to anybody you know we, we'll cover it at a high level others have covered it on, on blogs and other podcasts but i think that general consensus if, if you get a chance Go watch the videos. Go listen to what they say because we can't cover it all, um, and they really do explain why they're doing what they're doing as much as anything. And I think I think just in general, it's brilliant how open they are and how they go on to these and, and go through all these new releases and explain what they're doing, what the thinking is behind it. It's like getting time with the developers, which is always a great thing. Yeah, definitely. It's something coming from other games that's a bit unheard of. So, uh, no, they're definitely, it's a good little thing because everyone kind of gets a little vision into the workings and going on of how they kind of create all of these different things. Yeah, you know, it was it was a great week. I watched quite a few of them, but I think with the timing, some of them went on until like one, two in the morning UK time. So we kind of had to just kind of catch up on them afterwards. Yes, you woke up in the morning, checked your WhatsApp, and it had a million messages in. Yeah. You'd trawl through those to see what was going on. Um, so on the first the first section, as, we, as such, of the mini extravaganza, they revealed the Hulkbuster and the Miss Marvel card. So we knew both of those were coming. We'd seen the models before, um, and, and they did some painting videos. What were your overall impressions of Hulkbuster and Miss Marvel? Um, Hulkbuster just a solid character i think that you're going to kind of see in a lot of a uh, different list um yeah just solid kind of can turn it back into normal iron man and then can turn back into the hulkbuster again so i think you will see some plays that utilize that quite a bit um his tactic cards are quite solid as well the laser barrage and that i, th I think a few people have been saying like how you can try and get a 20 or 30 dice attack <laughs> yeah this this one of those ones where you're going to hear stories of them when they when they really go off yeah it's probably not the best idea to waste that much power on it but um when you can do it, it'll be fantastic definitely um miss marvel on the other hand um a bit disappointing like yes. <laughs> yeah it was like here's miss marvel's card and it was just like a great I think right. she's going to be one of those that once people start playing, it will start to make more sense. I think on reading it, it feels a bit flat. I'll be honest, I'm not a Miss Marvel. Uh, I haven't read any of the Miss Marvel comics. I don't really know that much about her. A lot of people have said they're fantastic ones to read, and, and it's definitely on my list to read. But uh, when the model came out when the you know th there wasn't that emotional attachment anyway and then reading the rules there still wasn't anything so it just felt a bit flat for me yeah it, uh, she is a kind of quotation mark newer character yep um but yeah i mean her comic runs great um she just i don't know she just seems to be lacking a few bits like she can transform and embiggen but it costs free power which is like okay yeah but for that she gets one extra dice 
in a five dice attack. And then the only good thing there is that she can um, what uh, interact with objectives within two rather than one. So she's kind of got what Toad has. But like, yeah, I, I kind of like looked at it and just went, well, I don't, I don't really know. Like, nothing yeah. jumped off the page and made you go, "Ooh, that looks good." You, you're expecting a spender or something, it, it, unless she's got one on the flip side, a bit like. Um, Black Bolt, for example, has yep. got Whisper. She might have something that actually makes you flip her over and go, "Oh, okay, that that's where she kind of comes into her own." Um, I, I mean, she's only a free us... threat, so she's she's not going to do a lot. But no. I was going to say, I think they would have shown us all of it. Yeah. The only thing similar to that is they may there may well be a team tactics card with her that we haven't seen yet. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But yeah, I think. Both uh, the Hulk Buster for me looked great. I, I absolutely love the model, um, especially I, I love the Hulk Buster model. But I also love the the transformed version of him. Yeah. yeah, looks brilliant. I, as a Criminal Syndicate player, I noticed quite early on he's always healthy, which is absolutely fantastic. So six threat is a lot to fit into my roster, but he may well find a slot in there just by the fact that he's so difficult to take down. Yes, and even definitely. once he's taken down, he's still classed as healthy. So why yeah. not? And I don't think it'll be that hard if if you kind of can get rid. Of, he's got thirteen health on that side. Um, when he flips, does he lose all the power? Yes, he does. So yeah, you can't do what I was about to say. So ignore me. Yeah. But no. Uh, yeah, I think he's still going to be very strong in certain lists. I, I'm interested to see how he plays in Avengers. Um. Like his leadership ability is situational, but we don't know whether down the line actually it opens up possibilities for other things. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that Avengers get a third hero already, third leader, I should third say. Leader. Well, again, I think Avengers are by far the biggest, so it makes sense. And I do wonder whether eventually they're going to start splitting them off into smaller groups yes. of Avengers, yeah. as they have done in the comics. Um, but there we go. We also got to see, as mentioned at the start, some random X-Men characters that nobody's ever heard of. They're not random. How dare <laughs> you? How dare you? <laughs> yeah, we got... Um... So, let's go over the boring ones first. Or, or, or the ones that I'd say are boring. Colossus and Magic. I know a few people are excited about Magic, and a few people... I, I quite like Colossus as well. Um not too sure on his model, but I don't. I think it's more to do with the paint job than the actual it looked, model. It looked good. It looked in keeping with him, but they didn't wow me. Uh, the yeah. magic model did wow me. I think that's potentially the best model of the lot. Uh, Very dynamic. Take yeah. all the emotion out of the characters as such. Just looking at which is the best model, I think that definitely is up there. Um, and then... We got Rogue, which that model looks really nice as well. Yep. Um, big exploding base as well. It seems like tactical rocks were a thing of the past and well, it's tactical helpful. explosions. Portals and explosions. Yep. And then Gambit. Oh, what a model it is as well. It's it's a classic model. And I suppose then are you taking Juggernaut as the best then? I oh, forget about that one. <laughs> Not about that, yeah. It's just an extra one. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, of course we've got Juggernaut as well. Who he looks like a pretty beefy dude. The beef there. I mean, he looks obviously huge. He is the, that model he is looks Juggernaut. absolutely huge. Um... Yeah. But in that video, yeah, you kind of get a sense of exactly how big he is. Um, yeah. I like that you get different hands as well, so you can have him either holding that um, traffic light, or you can just have him as a kind of normal hand. Um, so that was quite nice. I'll give you the two options, but no. O- overall, I mean, X Men are, are kind of a. That's what I grew up on watching that X Men comic, uh, the comic cartoon, and all of these characters are, or at least a lot of them are, kind of from that series. Where about you? Just like, yeah, I remember that. Oh, I remember that. So, yeah, I, I can't wait for these. They're going to be amazing. Oh, absolutely. Um, we we kind of knew they were coming at some point um but they're apps they're, they're just fantastic looking models and can't wait really can't wait um 
it'll fill out the X-Men rosters a little bit more. It'll give us more access to play some of the, the classics as such. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's gonna do wonders for the game. And a few people mentioned the fact that once you put those types of models on the table, a lot of our generation will see those kind of things and be like, ooh, you know. And I've, I already know a few people who have been interested in the game, but have kind of said, oh, now that they're out, I'm, yeah. I'm all in. Um, <laughs> Definitely. Um, it does make X Men have more than 11, uh, 10 characters now, though. It'll make them up to 11. So someone's got to get the chop. Yes. And I don't know who. <laughs> <laughs> I've already been planning. So I was like, yeah. Like, I mean, like I said, when. Moment Gambit's announced, then that's it. X Men is going to be my uh, force. And it did say Q1 2022, but it seems like a few UK stores have got release dates of November, which I would don't be surprising. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I don't trust placeholders. Those. Um, because yeah, I was hoping 2022 would be my like a nice, nice time to start them after Christmas and get the current fo- forces out of the way. But yeah, going through the rosters, it's like. Need to get rid of one of you. I don't know who though. Like, we saw Magic card and we saw Rogue's card, didn't we? In the stream. Um, we didn't see Colossus and we didn't see Gambit. We didn't see Juggernaut. So, yeah, yeah. those two look quite nice as well. I, I think Gambit will probably be a three throw. I don't think he'll be a two. Yeah, yeah. I, I expect it. he'll be a three. Um, and then Colossus. I don't know. I would. I was gonna say four, but you might be a five. It's always difficult. You you can never say for sure um, where where they're gonna end up with them because some of the ones that I've always thought would be more powerful haven't been, and vice versa. So yes. Um, yes. One of the other things we saw was uh, a terrain expansion, which they seem to be doing with all the big releases now. Mm-hmm. And I thought the terrain expansion was going to be the uh, the the plane. Yes. Because it's cropped into a lot of pictures. It's shown up in a few pictures recently, yeah. And it wasn't. However, they did mention on stream that it was to, to look out for it. Um, I can't remember, actually, I'm saying on stream. They have mentioned somewhere that there, there will be planes coming. They posted it in the Twitch chat of right. one of the streams you had seen where they somewhere. said, look out for more details on the planes late, later on or early next year or something along yeah. those lines so yeah i have a feeling it's coming so that's great and that then indicates there's probably more x-men on their way as well um yeah and maybe even the Got professor to think, i was gonna say a certain professor must be coming along soon at some point um but what we did get instead was crashed sentinel terrain expansion which uh looks absolutely fantastic and i'm i loving the, the the scenery that they're putting in it's all rocks on um quick change and and all of that good stuff with bits of sentinel falling on uh, the buildings so again that also gives the indication that we are going to get sentinels at some point so that, that was the first dip of our toes into it all and that was a lot and we were wowed by it um they, they updated some of the affiliations so they're out there now so Go check them out. Um, there were a couple of people added to different affiliations. Um, I think once again, Avengers and uh, Cabal grew as they, as they always seem to. Yeah. Um, and they've updated the transformation rules as well, just to make them a little bit clearer. For the next bit, they then mentioned changes to the core rules. Now, I was humming and hawing as to whether or not we were going to get MCP. 2.0 yeah i was hoping we didn't because i love the game the way it is and i don't really feel that it needs that much change i think it needs a little bit but not too much and once again they gave us a little bit but not too much so the, the key takeaways were 10 team tactics cards random crisis from your three the gems don't take up a character slot but they are then fixed to that character. And you can take multiple alter egos in your rosters, but not on the tabletop. So we start with the smallest, I suppose. Alter egos, 
not a massive impact, but any thoughts on that one? Um, yeah, I mean, as long as you're not, yeah, you're not taking them on, on the tabletop at the same time. So why not have a two threat and a three threat, three threat black widow? Like if you're running Avengers or anything like that and you want to have both options, then like, why not? Um, yeah, yeah I don't see it being a problem at all. It's not, there's only a handful of models that have alter egos like Iron Man, Spider-Man and Black Widow. So. Doctor Strange as well. Doctor Strange now, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, we're slowly getting them. But, yeah, it kind of just opens up different options that you can run, I suppose. Yeah, and I think the, the Iron Man was probably the one that, that tipped the balance because it would have been a shame not to be able to have Iron Man and Hulkbuster. Yes, yeah. You kind of want those extra options. So, yeah, again, not a massive impact, but good to see. Good, good to see that they're thinking these things through, I suppose. Gems was the next one. So this is, for me, I think Black Order is obviously the most impacted. And yeah. whilst the initial view was, haha, Black Order are screwed, um, I think actually it makes them more powerful because it gives them more options in their roster. Yeah, it gives them extra characters to add in when Absolutely. they can't do those uh, low point games. Yep. So I, I think overall that improves them, um, but there are other things coming up, which we'll cover in a moment, that might then change that. So yep. again, no knee-jerk reactions yet until we've seen the whole lot. Um, um, yeah, I mean, the one thing I don't like, for example, playing Guardians for a, most of the summer, like I liked having the option of either Star-Lord as a three threat or put him with the power stone as a four threat. Like I always felt if, if I had him as a four threat, he was a bit of a liability sometimes, but on those higher points where you've got like one point to spare, it's like, Oh, I'll put the gem in. That's fine. Yes. But now it's like, as far as I can tell, it's no, you've got to either have him with it or without it. Which... Yes. You, you, you either have him with it or you don't use him. Yeah. If you pick it in that, that situation. So, yeah, I'm I'm a little bit skeptical on it at the minute, but like like I said, I trust AMG. Yeah, it reduces some of the flexibility, and I think it reduces that. One of the things of, with the right characters with gems is you could you could do every number with minimal change. You know, going from say 14 to 15, there are no one threat characters. Yeah. So you could do it with a gem, but most others couldn't. And, and maybe that was why they took it out, made it a li bit more of a level playing field. But at the same time, it opens up an additional slot for you to put somebody else in that you couldn't before. Yeah, that's true. true. So it's a bit give with one hand, uh, take with one hand and give with the other. Loki's the only person I've used really with a, a gem. I generally run him with it, so it mm -hmm. doesn't really affect me that much. Um, but I can see how. You know, Doctor Strange is the other one. Again, generally you saw Doctor Strange with the gem. Yeah. So uh, Corvus always had it nailed to him. Um, I didn't think it was an option. I thought you, you <laughs> had to take it with him. Um, so yeah, I think Thanos is the big one um, along with Guardians. They're probably the two that get most affected. Um, but we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Crisis. This is probably the biggest change so in fact yes. we'll skip crisis and go to team tactics cards and come back to crisis so team tactics cards going from eight to ten they said it was so that they went ten characters ten team tactics cards i like it i think it's brilliant i think i prefer more um yeah gives you more options it's for those people who splash um dormammu and as your temp character it means you've got the two uh dark dimension team tactic cards just as a extra bit of spice if you do want to put them on the table then you you're not kind of wasting some of your cards um yeah well, i i really like it i, I don't see why you wouldn't no and i think it allows some more of the more flavorful cards that are a bit more edge case i think when you when you only had eight it was very difficult to justify anything that wasn't something that you were like yeah i'm going to use that most of the time yeah you're normally picking two restricted and then yeah six the other ones that you normally run anyway 
So now you've got that choice of, in this situation, I might want to run this. You know, sibling rivalry is a classic. You, yeah. You weren't going to run Thor and Loki together that often, but it's a great card. So why not put that in now that you've got that extra slot for those times when you do? Um, and there's a lot of cards like that. So hopefully we'll see a bit more variety in the cards um, and that'll then lead to a bit more variety of the cards being used actually in game as well which can only be a good thing yeah then crisis so th this is the big one so you still pick your crisis as normal so you still have three of each three secures three extracts um but instead of randomly discarding one and picking from the two you randomly pick one from your three initial thoughts into a player i don't know um I mean, the way I've always built rosters, I always have three secures and three extracts that I want to play. So just choosing one at random isn't that big a deal, especially if your opponent's like choosing at random. I suppose against certain matchups, you're like, well, I don't want to choose that, but you don't have a choice. Um, but yeah, I think it's one of them that I think start off with, everyone will be going, oh, this is too weird, but actually give it a month and go actually no this is fine like yeah so i think there are uh, there's a few issues with it for me and again i'm going to caveat all this with trust amg and see see what it is so i think to start with i think it's great for new beginners right so new people to the game i think definitely myself and others i've spoken to one of the hardest things is getting your head around what are the right crises to pick into the right matchups take that away you know you pick three that are good for you and then you just pick one of those it's randomly picked you don't have to worry about getting the right one as such um similarly it will speed up turn zero so you don't have that bit where you, what about this what about that i think that's the good side to it the the negative side to it is i think it will reduce your it'll reduce some of the flavor shall we say so again there will be certain cards that you will say right i'm going to take that into a certain matchup or i've you know i've got these two as the ones so i guarantee one of these and then this third one is my flex card that if i'm come up against this or i want to you know something like sword where you're like if i want to force them to low threat i've got that you know some of the time as long as they don't discard it that goes one of the ones i've heard a lot about as well is people won't take odd numbered extracts because if you've got say spiders which is there's, there's five of them the chances are you only play that if you've got priority so you can get ahead you can take that middle one then everybody takes their their side ones and then you've got three two ahead yeah you don't have the control to be able to only play that when you've got priority so then you know, and this is at the competitive level for those that are trying to win you know um you're going to be then going right that's too much of a risk i'm giving my an opponent a free one victory point or two victory point oh sorry one victory point advantage yeah um yeah. so there's things like that that the more you think it through and the more at a competitive level it becomes a little bit more difficult and also you know it takes away those counter picks you know those ones that you say and, and black order was the example i heard the other day i don't want to play this you know i'll play that into black order to stop them well you don't have that anymore so does that by default make them better um so see how it goes i do feel like one of the things they haven't addressed and maybe they will because we this isn't we don't know for sure that this is the full set of rule changes there might be others priority it still gives the person with priority a a, a good advantage as such yeah you're going first so any you know cards again um 
the extracts that are odd numbers you know if you if you've got priority and you look across and your opponents only got odd numbered extracts you know fine you, you get a bonus there i suppose that was always the case but you you still as the person with priority you get to go first you get to pick extracts or secures the person without priority no longer has the ability to counter pick into you so it's a bit awkward um and then they get to pick the threat value yeah the person without priority is essentially the only thing they're doing is they're picking the table edge which you see a lot of in tts in, in real, real life, life you just don't yeah. you don't i don't think i've seen anybody in a tournament yet go left to right yeah i've seen one or two people say i want that side and they've changed sides which is fine but i don't think i've ever seen anybody go left to right yet now that's not to say it doesn't happen but it just feels like the person with priority gets to do everything now um and the person without doesn't now again that might change they may make it that the person without priority now picks the threat value yeah um but even then it, it, because you're not picking f from a two and it's all random it, it just feels some of that control seems to have gone out of it yeah i know what you mean it's yeah it's kind of all or nothing and that's i mean to be fair it was it was still a little bit like that before like okay the player who lost priority got to choose one of the mi missions but that was literally it it's like you've won priority i'll get to choose secure extracts and i'll get to choose the threat value um but yeah i mean like i said it, it's one of those that i think give it a couple of months and everyone will be like oh yeah no this is fine um and it, I suppose, like I said, it just kind of makes you have to make sure that you're happy playing all the uh, missions in your deck. So, Yeah, and I, my worry with that is that decks become a little bit more, whereas the TT cards increase has provided extra flavour, I think this will make a lot of the crisis selections very dull, if that makes sense, because you're going to be like, well, I don't want, you know, I don't want the risk of having that against yeah, X, yeah, Y, yeah. and Z, where I've got no control. So we shall see. Like I say, there might be more rules that this might not be it, um, and it might not be so bad once we start playing it. But out of all the changes, that was the one where my the biggest question mark. I get it; it's great for new beginners. I get it; it's great for. Um, people that aren't necessarily playing competitively um and that's the majority and that's great um but i do wonder if there's is there a, almost a second way of doing it that we need to create for tournaments or something like that i don't yeah. know yeah i would we love I, I was gonna say i'd love to see it go person wins priority and they choose extracts or secures they then pick one of their three forget about discarding anything but then the person who doesn't have priority gets to see what they've picked and then can pick one of their three into that okay so and that yeah. takes a little bit more time but what it does is it means the person without priority at least gets a chance to respond they've yeah got it's a bit more reactive cards there and they can go right you've got that roster i don't know exactly what you're picking yet and you've picked that crisis of my three crises which one works best for me put that in and then it evens the playing field a little bit it's a lot slower and it means you need to understand your roster and your crisis cards and your opponent's roster and crisis cards a bit more than for a beginner um but it's it's something i was thinking the other day would be quite interesting to to, to experiment with at least yeah definitely excellent and then once we'd been <laughs> hit with all that oof, just when you think it's all over yeah they they go and smash us again so changes to cards so first one they're changing the format um which is going to make it easier to do it in multiple languages which is got to be good yep grow the game across the world um i can't can't see any issue with that other than why well, i hope their translations are better than some other model companies because we have seen in the past translations be uh, <laughs> a little bit misleading yeah. yeah um it's going to mess with our trays because they've gone from 
portrait to landscape. Yes. It's a bit of a pain. That's the biggest thing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to still try it with my tray and see if I can just work my way around it, but we'll see. Um, and with that, there are some changes to some of the characters. Mm-hmm. Not just some of the characters. The first 50 characters. Well, we're not sure if it's the first 50 characters or the first 50 oh, it was, boxes. I was about to say, it's got an asterisk to it. Yeah. <laughs> first 50 something. And we don't know whether that's CP 50 or if that's actual release date 50 or we're not too sure. I've, I've heard people say it is literally everything up until the current releases because they're the ones with the old school cards. So they're going to have to redo the cards anyway. Redo them all. Mm, so maybe. that opens it up for everybody to be changed if needed. I've seen some people say it's only up to, I think it was Angela and Enchantress was the cutoff that I'd, I'd heard somebody calculated. So really don't know. But what we do know is it's going to be the core box and um, at least the first, let's say, 10 boxes after that. You know, I think that's yeah. a comfortable um, way of looking at it. Ones we know that aren't changing, unfortunately, is Doc Ock and Peter Parker from the core set. Yeah. And that's because they've got this new um, diorama that, that they've done. That's coming out, yep. And they've got nice shiny holographic cards and everything. So we know the rules aren't going to change for those ones because otherwise it would invalidate all that. And that's fine. Uh, Doc Ock, I think, could definitely use a little bit of a boost. I think core set Peter Parker is okay. It's okay. I think you just get superseded by everyone else in yeah. Web Warriors. Yeah. Um, but we know Modok and Shuri are changing to bring them into line a little bit more. Um, yeah. So Modok's only going to be once per game on his bow and his rerolls. Um, Shuri is only pushing size three and under, which still still the majority. You know, there's a couple of edge cases. Um, as a criminal syndicate player, I wish it was size two because then I could just load it with size threes but we can't have everything um, and the timings on their re-rolls has changed I'm going to say back but um, is how we were all playing it to start with uh, yes I think yes. I, I can't really remember what everyone was playing with it, it was weird they did that errata and everyone went oh yeah that makes sense but I just can't remember how it was played before so you paid for your re-rolls after you'd seen your opponent, basically. So you you, you did re-rolls. You paid for your re-rolls after um, crits. Yeah. Whereas now you do it before crits. And, you, and if you're attacking and you've got re-rolls, you do it before your opponent even rolls. That's only for those edge ones. So it's Wakanda, Modoc, I think it is, and... Star Lord, I think they're the only ones. Oh, right, okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, so yeah, I've been they've... playing everything wrong. No, no, no. <laughs> so only those were... right, okay. Then it's flipped back so... again. Um, yeah. So that, that was interesting. We also saw Captain America has changed. Yep. So his strike now pushes size three, and his shield slam throws size three. And his shield... Uh, gets some power as well, I think it is. Yes, and his shield throw is strength 5 and gains power, which is yeah. nice. Um, and the Hulk, well, that was the big one. The Hulk, more or less, has been rewritten. Um, I think a lot of the ones other than the Hulk have had subtle but impact Slight changes. Slight tweaks, yeah. Yeah, they're not rewriting cards. They're not having mass overwrites but they're making those little tweaks that keep the flavour, keep the way the, the character plays, which just gives him the boost that he needs, or yeah. the character needs. Um, the Hulk was a bit more of a, a rewrite because I think there was an understanding that 20 threat, uh, 20 health with only um, two defense two defense isn't actually that great in this yeah. world anymore <laughs> um and they, they, again i love the openness i love the fact that they were saying you know when they first did it they thought that was going to be super strong um and, and you can see why compared to the core set it is but then very quickly yeah. got overtaken compared to everything else and it's uh yeah not the greatest so he's now got four defense and physical and energy isn't it 
I think he's four four three, and he can yeah. pay. I think it was three power to do the re rolls on defense. Yes. So that'll keep him alive for a lot longer, um, and we'll see. And he can get power off his strike now, which he couldn't do previously. Yes, so that's the other big big thing. Yeah, getting power a lot more. So expect to see a lot more hulks on the table, which again can only be a good thing. Fantastic model. Again, it's the kind of thing you want on the table if you're trying to show somebody the game, and they go. Oh, you know, I love Hulk. Right, well, you can use Hulk. At the moment, yeah. you kind of say, yeah, you, you can use Hulk, but... <laughs> He's not the best. Yeah, don't worry, I just won't attack him. Um... <laughs> Ten tactic cards as well. It gives me an opportunity to have Hulk, She-Hulk, and Agents of Smash tactics card. Absolutely. Um, that well, very uh, situational <laughs> yeah, opportunity, it... but... Go no, by... it... I really like all the changes. To be fair, like it's good that they're going to be available free to download. Um, yes. Like they will do a character pack, which I hope will be in kind of a decent quantity, so it isn't just a very limited run that everyone rushes out to buy and then we run out. Um, I can't see it because the, those packs that are currently being sold. I don't know at what point do they start getting sold with the new cards. Um, yeah. So there's, there's clearly going to be a load in the warehouse that have still got the old cards, so they're still going to have to sell that they're card. They're going to have to do it. Yeah, yeah of course. But... We also don't know whether there's going to be Team Tactics cards or Crisis in that pack as well. At the moment, they've said a card pack. Yeah. So... I would be su- surprised if they did a Team Tactic card. Like, I don't know. They could do the core ones, I think, as a pack. Um, it, it definitely feels like, especially from recent releases, all the recent releases seem to have just mainly kind of character-focused cards rather than... Um, or kind of affiliation-focused cards rather than kind of generic ones that anyone can use. Um, but yeah, I mean, having a pack where about... That, that's the one gripe that people have is like oh I really want med pack for example so I have to go and buy Nebula and yeah. Gamora where they probably don't really want the characters they just want that card so yeah releasing a pack that actually has them all in it could be quite nice for people who don't buy every single box yeah and I think ironically I, I think the opposite to you in a sense in that I think there won't be the any from the core set in there um, because I think they'll still want to sell the core set with that key. Yeah, yeah, yeah that point. makes sense. So I think it will be, yeah, probably, I don't know, f- again, first 20, 30 boxes of uh, yeah. Team Tactics cards and Crisis, they'll be in there. But Maybe that, some yeah. alternate art cards or something. And Absolutely, yeah. So, if it is, I'll probably pick it up if it's got alternate art. <laughs> well, we're going to have to pick it up for the cards for the, the existing characters. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, so, I meant if they did a separate pack. Like, if they did, here's a character pack and here's a team tactic pack. And... I'm hoping it's just one pack with everything in it and then you've yeah. just got it. Um, but we shall see. And again, you know, caveat with the fact that, you know, we, we do trust them. Everything they've done so far has improved the game. Um, Definitely. That we can see. The, the main theme that I got from the overall weekend or it wasn't quite a weekend, was it the, the three days, was they, they were trying to stop people from gaming the system. Yes. Trying to make it more fun and to reduce those turn one plays. All of which, you know, you look at it like that and you go, yep, brilliant, I'm all in for that. So, um, A plus for me. From yeah. the weekend, from the, from the three days. I mean, it was an A plus moment Gambit was shown, so yeah. Yeah, everything else was just a plus plus plus. <laughs> if we're going down that route, um, but no, an excellent three days, and can't wait for the future. Absolutely. Right then, after that, we went to a tournament last weekend. We did. I went to my first tournament. You went to your first Marvel Crisis Protocol tournament. This was my yes. th- fourth. Um, uh, yes. No, third. No, because uh... no, I went to one in Seventh City at Nottingham. Oh, yes, of course. Um, so, yeah, this this was my fourth. Uh, second one at the Bearded Card Trader in Stanley. Yep. Um, great venue. Uh, a little bit odd because it's in like an 
block of offices. Um, but it makes sense when you get there. Um, but yeah, great little venue. Um, we reckon they've got enough space to get up to 24, maybe a few more in there. Um, so hopefully it can grow. We had seven last time um, when JP stepped in and made it the eighth, so so we could do uh, no, no buys. This time we had 11, so oh, yeah, almost a 50% growth. Just because I attended, mate, that's what it was. That's Got what it was. Power. Everybody came just because you were going to be there. <laughs> um, and yeah, again, JP stepped in. So nobody had any buys. It did mean it was a bit of a hectic day for him having to to host it and to, to play games at the same time. But um, overall, I think he did another sterling job. Definitely. What were your initial thoughts on the overall day? I loved it. Like, um, yeah, the venue definitely threw me because I turned up and I was like, I don't know whether this is the right place. Um, and then I saw one of the lads kind of carrying something in. I was like, ah, yeah. That's where we're about to be off. Um, but no, I love the venue. It, it was a great little venue, and JP is a great host as well. Um, and yeah, I, I really enjoyed the weekend. It was nice because we had like five warlords. Yep. Yeah, five warlords, Newcastle warlords, all attendance. So it was nice, kind of us little hanging out. But then it was nice actually, kind of chatting with kind of some of the other northeast community as well for Marvel. So no, it was. A really good day. I'm just gutted that I'm missing the October one. Yep, unfortunately you are. But there is an October one, so if anybody wishes to come up, it is October the 16th. 16th. I'm glad you filled that bit in. Um, <laughs> and there is a pack for it now on Dropbox. So if you go to the Facebook event uh, and find the pack, and in there there is a little map. So for anybody that has turned up and isn't exactly sure where the entrance is, I've I've made a little map and there's a big sign as to where where to go in. So that that's good for anybody travelling up. Um, yeah. So we we as you say there were five warlords there and shock horror we didn't get to play a warlord. I know that was the nicest thing because normally whenever we go to an event for iOS like game one or normally the last game it's like oh I'm playing someone that I could have played like any club night yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah it, like literally five warlords and not a single one playing each other so that was a nice start absolutely um, I think at one point the two Lees ended up playing against each other but game two they did yeah. yeah considering there were five of us I think that was the only Warlord clash in a group of 12. Yeah, it was. I yeah. think that was brilliant. As you say, we, we've been to 30-odd player tournaments before, and there's only been like two or three of us, and we've managed to play each other. So <laughs> was... Not even that. We've played like two or three of us like yeah. in one event. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, overall, uh, that was a, a nice bonus. So, what did you take? I took Asgard. So... Oh, my favourites. Yeah, I was going to take Guardians. That's what I was um, set on. That's what I've kind of played a lot over summer and I've played quite a bit kind of uh, in real life as well. And I was like, yep, I'm going to take the Guardians and know what they do and whatnot. And then we had a game on Tuesday night and I just went, no, nah, I can't play three games in a day with these. Like, they're fun, but they're just so frustrating. And going back to the previous part, I just can't wait until they get some tweaks on their uh, cards. So, yeah, I'm definitely going back to them because I just can't wait to play them with some kind of more, not flavourful, but tweaked cards. They just lack a few things that other cards do. Um, you just want to feel that you've got a chance. I, I kind of feel with Guardians, they're the one affiliation that you start the game up already somewhat down yes right, and you've you've got to play the best that you can and hope your opponent makes some mistakes to win yeah um and that's tough yeah you get into situations and like you're facing a different opponent um and you see their three threat he's doing like this that and the other and then you go to yours and you're like where's the rest of the rules <laughs> yes <laughs> you look at Groot's card and it's like <laughs> you even looked at it on Tuesday and went, where's the rest of the rules? I was like, no, that's yeah. literally it. Like, it doesn't have anything else. Um, 
so yeah, just a, a few tweaks and they'll be fine. Like like you said, they they can still do well, but you have to be on it like the whole game. Um, so yeah, I didn't really want to do that for a weekend of uh, not a weekend, but an actual proper event of all day gaming. Um, so I switched to Asgard randomly. Um, they kind of have a bit of everything in there. Uh, and the main thing is just kind of smash your opponent and hope for the best. So uh, I had in my 10 uh, Thor. I had a full Asgard roster. So I had Thor, Valkyrie, Loki with the Mind Gem, um, Hela, Angela. Uh, who am I missing? Enchantress. Enchantress. Um, and then I had Shuri, Okoye, Dormammu. And who am I missing? That's it. You six Asgardians plus the stone. Oh yes. Plus the yeah. Plus the, yeah. So yeah, it, it, Dormammu was I kind of painted him up over the week, and I was like, you know what, I needed a tenth man, put him in, and if I'm doing really bad on get like, and I'm on the bottom table on game three, I'll just bring him out for a bit of a laugh. Um. Shuri and Okoye, Okoye, kind of, it's Okoye. You like, need two points when, well, most yeah. things need two points, especially Asgard with all the high pointers. Yes. So she's so the best two pointer. She was a kind of given, and it was a kind of get used to her before she probably gets nerfed. <laughs> yep. Um, so, yeah, she was in there. Shuri, for the missions that I took, it was kind of very much a. Um, basically for a panther gauntlets to push people off the objectives yeah um so she was in there if i needed to use her um and yeah that was the kind of 10 that i brought um for cards and this is where about so i'm gonna struggle i took i'm just gonna quickly find... i'm gonna guess you took rainbow bridge you took odin's blessing <laughs> you took med pack and you took brace uh, that is, yeah. So, I, yeah, I took advanced R and D, bit of rivals, brace, uh, med pack, Odin's blessing, rainbow bridge, sibling rivalry, and tactical analysis. There you go. Um, the free short move. So, I took that, and then for my extracts, I took um, fear grips, research station, and spider infected, and then secures. I took meteors, uh, mutant madmen, and portals over on the sea. So, hi. That was my uh, full roster. Excellent. I got one practice game in on the Friday night against uh, Spider Foos himself and lost. So I was like, right, well, get that out of the way. Let's just focus on the day. No shame there. Uh, all, all great players have lost to the Spider Foos. Yes, definitely. And how about yourself? What did you take? So, shock horror. I continued my reign of terror of a criminal syndicate uh, with the kingpin himself. Black Cat, Taskmaster, Crossbones, Mega Red, Enchantress, Toad and Okoye, Lizard, and I put in Luke Cage as a bit of a change. So, oh. most of that is what I've been running. I'm really enjoying having the 2-2 two, two threats. Uh, it opens up a lot of options. Um, and... Modok wasn't finished and he probably would have gone in there. I haven't done Mysterio yet. He is another option that will go in there. Um, but I wanted to try Heroes for Hire. Uh, so I went with Luke Cage. Excellent. And then Tactics, all according to plan. Advanced R&D. Shadow Organization. And then we had Heroes for Hire. We had Bitter Rivals. Climbing Gear. And then my two restricted of Brace and Metapunk always uh, what I run with and then we had Gamma Mephisk, Terrigen Clouds as my secures and Herbs Research Station and Deadly Legacy Virus Cured as my extracts cool so um, not far off what I've been running quite a lot of uh, Deadly Virus I put in for this one I hadn't been running that previously uh, that was Cubes but I, I played a couple of games with Cubes recently I didn't really yeah it just didn't quite go for me so i thought i'd try something a little bit more different and obviously with crimson being able to pass things around it seemed yes. like a good idea um and uh spoiler i ended up playing it twice so you can find out whether <laughs> it was a good or a bad idea um so round 
well, so before we get to, to that bit, one of the things that he's done first time this time was uh, lunch orders, uh, which yep. was something a bit different. Um, so we all managed to put a, a lunch order in with him and, and he dialed that in and um, went and got that, which was really good for, for lunch. And it was uh, good of him to have to pop down and get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then round one, who did you get? Um, so I got Stephen Davidson and he had Web Warriors. Um, so, yeah, uh, it, it was quite interesting. There was three web warriors and two spider foes at the event three spider foes was the three spider was foes three spider foes Fu, uh russ and ben oh yes of course there was yeah yep so yeah th- there was um yeah a spider-man spiders. theme a spider-man Six theme across the place wasn't there <laughs> yeah. so yeah i played steven um and i won priority so i picked uh fear grips for the um hammers and he picked sword um, so I went with the 18 and I'm trying to think who I had now I had Thor, Angela Valkyrie, Shuri and Okoye so, nice. yeah Shuri and Okoye I was like I, I wasn't 100% thinking I was going to run them at all over the weekend and then uh, over the day and then game one they went straight on the table um, so that was my 18, he had Ghost Spider, Miles, Venom Amazing Spider-Man and Black Cat. So, yeah, he was fully affiliated. Um, he was using Miles as leadership. I put Angela on one flank, and I put Thor and Okoye on the other, and he put Amazing Spider-Man on the side where Angela was, and he kind of said he forgot that Angela was a long move. Right. So straight away, kind of, I activated Angela, and because it's the joys of Asgard, because they get two power, I could pick up a hammer as well as then act interact with the uh, computer yep so already it was kind of just giving me the upper hand so that kind of made, meant he had the move of ghost spider onto the other flank to grab the objective and uh, so grab the hammer yep um and then it got a bit weird valkyrie was in the middle and picked up the um uh, my kind of deployment hammer yep and then the problem was he had the venom on his middle bit <laughs> so <laughs> valkyrie against venom not the not the fu- most fun um it was it was a good game it was just very swingy with dice um turn one valkyrie rolled eight defense dice and rolled eight blanks nice so that was a dazed uh, valkyrie yep uh, sorry, uh, Angela, sorry. Oh, right. Oh, even um, worse. Yes. Turn two, eight defense dice, eight blanks. <laughs> so turn two, I had a dead Angela, um, which suddenly I was like, uh-oh, this isn't looking good. Um, the mistake he made, and this is what we chatted about afterwards, he kind of moved um, Venom, Amazing Spider-Man, and Miles all into the middle to kind of get rid of Angela and um, Valkyrie that were there. But it meant um, Shuri was on the flank, on the right-hand flank where Angela was and basically could just keep pushing Black Cat away from the, like, objective that were there. Yeah. Um, And then it kind of became a bit of a ruck in the middle. Like, Valkyrie did a bit of damage, got dazed, and then um, was quite fortunate and survived the other damage on, like, when she flipped i think she had two health left but then thor kind of basically smashed ghost spider um straight away took the hammer and then i played rainbow bridge so he went straight across to the uh kind of a, towards the middle of the table charged in using his for asgard um ability and then just started wailing on venom and um amazing spider-man and kind of got rid of both of them. Valkyrie picked up the hammer, managed to flip the console, and then just ran away. And I basically moved, <laughs> so I moved her like literally just within two of Okoye, thinking, well, if he then brings Ghost Spider across to try and get rid of a Valkyrie, then I can bodyguard it. And he kind of did the whole web line, like teleported across, and was going to do the huge freestyle beatdown, and then Okoye just tanked it all. 
Yeah, she like, does. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then that uh, that kind of like just gave me the lead. He he kind of like like I said lost a few characters. Um, we didn't get round to finish him. I think we were on turn four when we were running out of time, but it was like fourteen seven at mine. He was like, I'm happy to call it there because I'm not going to catch you. Yeah. Um, uh, I think Valkyrie had two swords, uh, two hammers at the time, so it was, he was like, "Yeah, you're, even if I manage to flip everything, I'm not going to catch up, and you've got that one to just run away with." Um, but no, overall, it was a really good game. It was just, like I said, very swingy on dice. It, it, it's something that I, I'm still getting my head around on MCP how spiky dice can be. Um, yes. But yeah, losing Angela on turn two was like, "Oh, I'm in trouble here." Um, and then at that point, I was just like, I just need to play the objectives and try and score. And I, I had a couple of fortunate turns where uh, he rolled like two or three times on one objective. And I had like one character that was there and he just couldn't roll it. Yeah. He, he was just like, right, OK. It's one of those where he, he just couldn't flip it as well. So, no, really good game. It was Like I said, Stephen was a great opponent for kind of game one on a Saturday morning. Or well, Saturday lunchtime, I suppose, because we start at lunchtime. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was really good, but I got a uh, 14-7 win. Congratulations. Thank you. How about you? So I played JP, the, the owner of the bearded car trader, um, and who, who nicely stepped in as the um, extra player. He was using X-Force, and he was running, he only had the, what, six X-Force characters, I think he had. Um, yep. and, and that's all he had. So I so, oh. That's a bit of an odd roster. He's like, yeah, this is all I'm going to use. I'm just here as a standing player. So I'm like, yeah, fair enough. Um, and he'd said last time we did it that every time he, he, he pulled out the roster, he was like, I want to play somebody who's experienced in the game. And so this time he was like, and I get to finally play somebody who's experienced in it. Um, <laughs> so I was like, all right, fine. Um, and I kind of, he knew the rules in fairness. I think I think he downplays it a little bit. He, he knows what what's going on, which is great. Um, he did make a couple of mistakes. The first one was I won priority and I chose secures. Um, he then picked deadly legacy virus as yeah. his extract, which plays right into my hands. So I had uh, Mephisk. I chose to go to 19 because I thought um, he could use all his toys then. Yeah. Um, and it gets the a little bit more. So he was running Deadpool, Domino, Cable, Sabretooth, and Wolverine. Okay. Uh, I was running uh, Kingpin, Black Cat, Taskmaster, Crossbones, Toad, and Enchantress. Um, kind of set up in little pockets. So Kingpin and Taskmaster across on the left, Crossbones and Toad on the right, and Enchantress and Black Cat in the middle. So they could either go get the the middle virus or they could just go and support whichever side needed it um it, it was a little one-sided in that the one on my right he contested for most of the game so he stuck saber tooth and wolverine down there against uh, crossbones toad for whatever reason i chose to keep toad within two to start with just so i could take the virus yeah um in the middle, I can't remember. I think he must have picked it up to start with. Um, but then I, I got it back. I think I, it was Enchantress. Um, just walked up and, and stole it off. So Enchantress got dazed turn one, which left her with enough power just to walk up and get it off um, whoever had it. I think it was Domino. And then pass it across to Taskmaster on my left. Taskmaster had got the one on the left at the start and um, between him and Kingpin held the witness on the left against Deadpool. Yep. So Taskmaster then had two on him, um, and Toad had one on him. Uh, this was turn two, so turn one finished. It was only four one. Um, but then I managed to get Enchantress across there, hand it off to Taskmaster. Toad, I think, had been attacked and therefore was able to do slippery to start to move across. And then he double moved and handed it off, his off to Taskmaster as well. So turn two, Taskmaster died, but <laughs> it scored me the eight victory points. Yeah, that you needed. Um, so turn two, again, he was, we were both 
on the one on the right, so nobody scored that. The one on the left, I scored, and I got the eight victory points for the uh, viruses. Had I been a little bit more cunning, I probably could have kept both Toad and Taskmaster alive. I don't think either were a major threat. I scored the three points, then start a turn three, automatically just won it at that point by just handing yeah. it off. Um, but I kept it going for a little bit longer. We then played out turn three, but I was end of turn two. Sorry, it was fourteen one. Um, and then turn three played out, um, and he scored the one on the right. Um, but I scored the one on the left just to get to, to sixteen. So it finished sixteen three. Uh, end of turn three, I think. Uh, end of turn three. Nicely so done. It's quite a quick game. Very brutal. Um, you know, uh, again, it, it was a almost perfect scenario for me as criminal yeah. syndicates. Um, I kind of said to him afterwards, did you realise I could do that? And he said, yes, but I don't think he quite realised how easy it was. How easy, yeah. Um, so um, hopefully it was a good game for him as well. It was just quite a short and brutal one. Enchantress got killed early on. He, he focused in on Enchantress and managed to get rid of her. Uh, and obviously Taskmaster died yeah. early on as well because he sacrificed himself um, and Wolverine and Sabretooth did well against Crossbones. That's well. Um, so that was end of round one. So we're both on a win. Yeah. At that point we had lunch, which was mm-hmm. great. And we all put our, well, most of us put our rosters out for Best Painted. Yeah, was some really nice looking rosters there actually. There were. I took pictures of all the ones were out for display and I've stuck them onto Instagram and I think I put them on Twitter as well. Um, so feel free to go and have a look at those. Um, I love seeing the rosters for Marvel. The, the colours, the, it's just so bright, vibrant yeah. and just looks fantastic. Um, lots of different takes on the way that they've done them. I really like JP's X-Force. They've done X-Force colours and a little bit more muted than perhaps some of the others. Then we've got some of the others that are a lot more um, vibrant, especially yours. That kind of, I think, I think yours looked even more vibrant because they were on the cosmic mat as well. Yes, um, yeah, kind of I know what you mean. Really yeah. popped, um, and having Dormammu there was he looks absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, there, there was a good variety. Like you say, a lot of spiders or spider foes. Yeah, there was. Uh, yeah, it was quite a nice mix, and like I said, the standard was decent, so, like really good. So it was quite hard actually voting for just one. Like maybe we could have like done first, second, or third or something, and then yes, and maybe we suggest that next time that maybe we just at least as first and second because yeah. um, spoiler, there was a bit of a tie break, but we'll cover that near the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then round two. Who did round you have two. for round two? Because once again, we were convinced we were going to end up facing each other. Yes. Um, but we, we avoided each other. And who uh, did you get? I got Russell Hunt, um, who was playing Spider Foes. Um, so again, like someone who I've never met before, never played before, but it, it was absolutely amazing opponent, like really fun. Um, he made it a good game as well. So we were kind of like laughing all the way through it. Um, he won priority. And we had... Uh, 14 threat. We picked mutant extremists and then portals. So he picked um, mutant extremists, um, 14 threat level. Um, which yeah, Asgard doesn't don't really like 14 threat. No, uh, because there's so many points. Um, and he kind of said yeah, it was, it's kind of half the reason I did did that. Um, but. I was quite surprised with what he picked. So he actually picked um, Venom, Green Goblin, Mysterio, and Craven. Okay. So he he could have probably gone a bit wider, but yeah, um, yeah, he he went with four, and I had Thor, uh, Valkyrie, Enchantress, and Akoya again. Yeah. So you can so, four as well, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, I was I was like, well, you know what, four is like probably the best I can do here with staying in affiliation, etc. And then, yeah, I was quite surprised that he went to four. So um, I basically had Enchantress on one side, um, Okoye and 
Thor in the middle, and then Valkyrie on the right hand side. Um, he put Mysterio on the side where Enchantress was, and then he had this was a little bit weird. He had Green Goblin, Venom, and Craven kind of not in the middle, but not on the right hand. It was kind of like in the middle between the right and the middle, which I can kind of understand why because it, it meant he could kind of go off in both directions. Yep. Um, but when you've got things like Venom on a short move, it's a bit hard to actually get up the table. Um, so he activated um, Green Goblin first, um, moved up, tried to interact with his home objective, and didn't manage anything. Um, no, sorry, he, he activated Craven first because he moved right to the centre of the table. Um and interacted with the safe house. It was blank. Right. Um, and then I activated Enchantress on the right hand side, uh, on the left hand side. Sorry. Moved up. Found the um, senator or was civilian, whichever it is. Yeah. Um, so straight away I was like, right, okay, well at least I've got that. Um, I then interacted with the portal, um, and got that. So no, I didn't get that. Sorry. Um because she's only got two NG defense. So, yeah, not the best one for it. Um, but this was where he kind of struggled because he moved Mysterio up. Um, he failed to do any damage to Enchantress. And then he realized that Mysterio's only got one energy one. defense. Yep. So he's like, even if I roll that one, it, I can't do anything on that side. So no one had that objective. Um, but then he started moving... Venom and Green Goblin across because he knew he needed to um, try and get that civilian because that was guaranteed scoring me two a turn. Yep. Um, he activated Green Goblin, failed to get his home portal, which was kind of big, but then he got it with Venom anyway, but it meant he was like wasting a wasting um, power and wasting yeah, power yeah. and move. Um, Thor went across to where Enchantress was and then I played Tactical Analysis um, which helped me move short so basically Enchantress was just running away at this point yep. um, and then Thor basically got into got over to where the um, uh, other objective was and then kind of got that himself and then he just stood there and I think at that point Russ realised that he couldn't kind of get to Enchantress because Enchantress was just moving further and further away um, so he just basically threw everything into four, like turn two and turn three, um, and dazed him. But then he kind of came back and started just absolutely smashing face. Um, but yeah, I mean, Okoye was Okoye just held my back, uh, home objective. Valkyrie got the right hand one and then went over and started trying to get his home one. Yep. Um, but then that meant Craven had to kind of fall back and then try and fight. So they were kind of duking it out and not really doing each like damage to each other so they were just kind of like bouncing off i think he managed to finally flip valkyrie but even then it was kind of too late um and then we called it i think it was yeah turn four um and it was 18 five to me right um because he just like he couldn't get the two points from enchantress he wasn't kind of pushing towards my home objective he wasn't pushing to he basically had given up on the right hand objective so he literally had um, his home objective and like the left-hand side objective that he was trying to get, but then Thor was just there, kind of just batting everyone off. So um, yeah, it was kind of very one-sided. The fact that I kind of found the senator straight away with Enchantress was very fortunate, um, and the fact that uh, I almost didn't put tactical analysis into my list but I put it in there just in case I kind of got an early kind of secure of it. And then I could just try and move away very quickly. Yeah. Um, and that's the, th like, that's the thing that I found with Asgard, getting two power a turn. It's so helpful for objectives and tactic cards and everything. It enables so much. It really does. It just allows you to do things that um, you, you can't do normally. And it was weird because I kind of started on Asgard when I yeah. moved to others. I was like, Where's all my power? Why yes. can't I, you, you don't realise until <laughs> afterwards how good it is. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's fantastic. 
I'm not a big fan of those kind of ones where it's so dice dependent and you kind of you, you had both crises where one was dice dependent and one was essentially token just dependent random. you know yeah. it's just all random um there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot that can go well and a lot that can go wrong in that that's completely out of your control yeah and yeah it, it was i mean like i said he, he kind of even realized like the moment you move mysterio onto the objective he's like i, I can't actually get this can i and i was like no nope. <laughs> um and it, yeah it was just one of those where it was like that realization is like oh i should have put somebody else over there um but no i mean it, it was nice playing spider foes i mean i've played them a lot of times playing a uh, spider foos um but yeah no it was a very um not one-sided get well it was quite one-sided and thor when he went off as well it's just that was another kind of you kind of warned me with him he can either go off or he can do nothing but it seemed like a lot of the times when i needed him to go off this time he actually did go off so um, it's great when he goes off because he is fantastic and you get your opponents that they go oh he's broken he's rubbish you know he's too much this and yeah. the other but then you will play three or four games where he just doesn't do enough and then all I... of a sudden you're like oh maybe <laughs> get rid of him and then wow all of a sudden bang he's back again yeah um that that was my frustration with asgard was that both him and angela i found often would have those games where they they win you the game quite easily and yes those games where they just it just didn't happen Fair, um, yeah yeah definitely but, um so yeah i got an 18-5 win um like i said ross was a amazing opponent um great laugh and he actually got my uh favorite game as well so um no he, it was a really good opponent to be playing excellent so i moved on to table what was class the table one which was the um the cosmic table that I think yep. you played on first turn um and that was some ter- terrain that i'd painted up for jp um it looked very nice between the, the the last tournament and this one just to to add to some of the tables and i'd, I'd done it all without seeing the without the map um and i'd taken some paint recipe off uh, facebook and yeah. i was a bit unsure shall we say to start with whether or not it would match the mat and i was quite relieved when i got there and put it on the mat and it was like actually no the, the, those colors aren't too far off so. yeah you would kind of you were saying all throughout the week going, oh, i'm not too sure on this i'm not too sure on that but like so, i mean, i played in the game one i was like yeah this terrain yeah. looks amazing like really works so good job thank you i was quite glad with that um so i played sean Asquith, um who was running web warriors i've played sean once before in a, in a friendly game so not completely new to each other um i lost priority um and short sean got it and i was convinced he was going to put a, he had two pay to flips out of his three so i was convinced he was going to put a pay to flip so i picked um deadly legacy virus again yep done, done well for me first time um and he got riots which was a surprise because that was the only one that wasn't paid to flip and i said to him a surprise that he'd gone for that and he said that's his preferred one with web warriors because it gives him the power which web warriors are normally starved of right i can kind of understand um but it kind of again played into my hands in that i had deadly legacy which i like and riots um which again the the leadership works on the problem this time was that he had priority so theoretically he should be able to hit two of the, the viruses to my one however running black cat and enchantress normally gives you a chance to steal at least one of those back so he set up with taskmaster and enchantress on the left well enchantress kind of in the middle of the left and center so that she could go out to the left if needed where venom was so a bit of a counter pick into venom um or into the middle if I needed to steal something. Crossbones was bang center because he was just going to sit on that home D. Next in was Black Cat so that she could go in the middle and steal something. And then Kingpin was out on the right by himself. Uh, he had set up, like say, Venom on my left. He had Peter, call set Peter Parker and Zemo in the middle. Uh, Gwen kind of halfway between the middle and his and the right uh, and then miles out on the right um so after the first turn i managed to get 
um, both sorry I managed to get all three extracts in the end and I managed to get um, on the three consoles I think I managed to daze somebody so I, I picked up two of the console two of the viruses and I was able to daze somebody who had the third I can't remember I think it was it was Peter Parker so he'd put Peter Parker in the middle and taken the middle one um, and I was able to daze him so that had gone quite well so I was up 6-1 uh, after the first turn uh, second turn he then played which again it all comes with experience the more you play the, the more interesting it gets um, he then played uh, all webbed up I had like three characters around his Peter Parker and he played all webbed up and then was able to go into those and, and did quite a bit of damage at that point and it became a bit of a scrum I had quite a few people dazed across there I left Zemo across by himself because I was trying to get to a point where I could pass all the cures to a single person to kill them off Yeah, and I thought I had it all sorted he played all webbed up and then started to daze people and take back some of those viruses um, so Kingpin had one and I think Crossbones ended up with one at one point I managed to, to make the play in the end with I think it was Black Cat that went across um, and sacrificed herself for the greater good mm -hmm. um, and she was able to kill herself uh, and just to take those, those extra points Enchantress was hanging on there she'd taken quite a beating and then it kind of moved across to the right where Kingpin and Crossbones were um, I think I'd played climbing gear to get across there um, and like I say at that point it cashing in and, and keeping those three um, riots terminals was, was enough to, to win me the game um, it there were a couple of times where I thought oh this is going to be one-sided and then he, he, he did make some really good plays to pull it back um, which was good um, and then at one point it did look like I was running out of healthy characters because I kept getting dazed um, and obviously that turns off the criminal syndicate leadership ability for the secures yeah um, so although it was in the end I think it was something like 17-4 uh, that sounds like a much more of a bigger blowout there was a couple of times when he could have gone his way and he could have picked up um, all the legacy virus and, and managed to kill one of his own um, I think he'd, he'd taken tactical analysis uh, not tactical analysis he'd taken the one where you can pass it off um, oh yeah 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 I can't remember which one that is. Uh, so he had a plan for that, which you know um, was interesting. And I'd forgotten that you had to pay an extra point if you already had one. So at one point, um, I think Miles had two of them, and Miles got dazed, and so there were two available. And I went and picked up one, and I was like, "I'll pick. I've got two power. I'll pick both those up." Um, and actually as soon as you pick one up you have to then pay a, a power for every one that you're holding and because normally I just pass it between that doesn't count but obviously when you pick it up it does so that scuppered one of my plans uh, which kept kept him in kept it going a bit a little bit longer but I was lucky enough to get away with it which one's that that you have to pay to in fact it was Crossbones that killed himself or Black Hat Black Hat had got dazed and that was where the problem was because Black Cat was going to go away and uh, hand it off and, and he managed to daze and KO Black Cat yeah um, so all of a sudden they all came up uh, across on the right um, and I think his Gwen had one so I had to end up dazing Gwen ah, um, fair enough. and then it was Crossbones that sacrificed himself for the greater good yeah um, yeah it's deadly legacy virus where if you if you want to pick one up you have to pay an extra power for every one you've already got Ah, uh, yes, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah for each cube that you're holding. Yeah, for enough. Yeah. So, again, um, you know, managed to pull out a win there. Um, going into it, my objective for the for the day was to get the first two wins because 
on Longshanks. I, I was on a winning streak of three, and I wanted to get the, the little badge to get that you get when you get a winning streak five of wins. five. So I was I was chuffed with that. I managed to get my little badge. So I was okay, like done. quite happy at that point. I'm just looking now. It was 21-4 in the end. Oh, very nice. Um, so there we go. We then had a, a little break, um, and we went into round three. So who were you playing? So at that point, I might add, there were three of us on two and out. Uh, yes. Yeah, so there was. We knew that we couldn't get, or, or we knew there was a chance there wasn't going to be a clear winner. Um, but at the same time, it was said by a few people that whoever gets to win the one with the two two and O's is going to probably win it because they'll get the better strength of schedule. Um, so, who did you end up with? I ended up playing Paul Davies. Yes. Um, and he had Web Warriors. Yep. Um, and he was the one that was going... He was two... one and one at that point, wasn't he'd it? Won, yeah, he'd won one and lost one at that point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he had Web Warriors. Um, and I won the roll-off. And I picked um, Deadly Meteors. Um, partly because I just wanted to play something a bit different. <laughs> like I was like, it's what we talked about earlier. I was happy with all the kind of secures and extracts in there, so I was just like, oh, I haven't played Deadly Meteors yet. Let's play that. Um, he picked Fear, Fear Grips, which is great because it's one of my um, missions anyway. So I was more than happy to play. Um, uh, what do you call it? Like one of my extracts as well. Um, so I picked the 17 threat, and I had um, Thor, Angela, Enchantress, and Valkyrie. Nice, simple, kind of bog-standard 17 threat Asgard. Yep. Um, like I said, he had Web Warriors, and he had Amazing Spider-Man, who was actually his leader, which was surprising, but I don't think he really used his leadership ability once. Ghost Spider, Miles, Moon Knight, which was a surprising one. And Valkyrie for 17. Awesome. But yeah, I, I had priority. I knew that I had kind of out dropped him as well, so I could kind of keep the priority each turn. Um, and essentially, he did the same as game one. He put Amazing Spider Man on one side next to Angela and forgot that Angela was a long move. So Angela just did her normal thing of move up, grab a hammer, and then grab the objective. Um, it was uh, talking about swinging dice this was one of those where everything just popped off like properly just crazy dice rolls left right and centre it, like it got to the point of he put um, so Moon Knight Gwen and Miles he all put on like in the middle Um he put Valkyrie off to the uh, my left hand side. And on my left hand side, I had Enchantress and Thor. I had Valkyrie in the middle, and like I said, Angela on the right hand side. Um, he basically moved Valkyrie up straight away and grabbed the left hand object objective. Um, and as we were saying, like as Guardians, two power, he could do both of those. Um, Thor could move up, and I managed to grab the kind of objective off of um, the uh, meteor off of him, but she was still holding the um, sword. Enchantress just moved up just behind Thor because I was just, I kind of had a feeling, well, I'm going to get power next turn anyway. I can then just steal the um, hammer off of him. And that's kind of what happened. I stole the hammer off of him. Thor then just absolutely smashed Valkyrie apart. Um, Angela on the other side just went apocalyptic over like three turns. Um, she did Sword of the Stars and dazed uh, Moon Knight, then played Angelic Assassin and dazed Miles, then went into Amazing Spider-Man and dazed Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> and then the next turn did exactly the same and just KO'd all three of them. Um, to the point of I was rolling and like getting nine damage for it at a time. 
it, it was like like so it was one of those you're rolling the dice it's like oh, i've got four crits <laughs> when it works it's beautiful <laughs> yeah it was just absolutely crazy and we were just laughing about it because he was rolling certain dice like defense dice and he rolled like three crits at one point and we were like what is happening in this game yeah it, like it, it's going absolutely bonkers um but no it, it was really good it was just like i said one of them where by i think turn four he literally had Gwen left, I think it was. Uh, no, Gwen wasn't even alive. I think he had Valkyrie left on like one wound, and I think that was about it. Um, it, it was just very one-sided, and Angela just popping off. Just it, it just made it so easy. <laughs> yeah, it, like as bad as that sounds, it, it was because it, she was just like you're rolling dice and going, oh, okay, well I've dazed him. Oh, I can now play Angelic Assassin. Oh, I've dazed him. Right, well, my next action, I'm now going to attack that character instead, like, yeah. rather than... And then once you've done all that, you can throw something size 4 on top of them. Yes. You know, it, it is... When, when when it works, it's absolutely brutal. Um, yeah. You know, yes, you can fluff sometimes and not have enough power, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, that didn't work, I can't do that. But when it all slots in, yeah, you, you can have some absolutely brutal turns with Angelic. Yeah that was like I kind of had the highs and lows of Angela over that day because yeah. it was like game one dead by turn two like game three kills half the roster in <laughs> two turns um, but yeah it, I mean Paul was a great um, opponent again like I said like he did have Amazing Spider-Man as the leader but I, I just didn't really see it how it would work in this one because it's like great you can give slow but like who cares we're basically fighting down the yeah across sea it's like uh, it's not like i need to get around everywhere um and it's and... not like you want to run away with hammers no exactly you, you just want to get into the mix and yeah. that was the thing it was um when i dazed moon knight because moon knight had picked up his kind of home hammer then I dropped her and picked her up and suddenly she's got like an eight dice sold at the stars just going well let's just uh, start rolling some dice then <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah like you can roll as bad as you want but when you're rolling that many dice then uh yeah it kind of helps you um but no it, again it was a really good game but it was very very one-sided and i ended up winning uh 22 5 by round th- three i think it was or round four I'm trying to think what it was. Um, I, I can't remember which round we had to call it. Fair enough. But, but yeah, it was it one of those where brutal. I held all full hammers. I had all the objectives. And it was just, I did that over like two or three turns. So yeah, it was, like you said, very brutal and very, uh, very one-sided. But again, it was a great opponent. I mean, it was not a shame to play Web Warriors again. Because like, uh, it's never a shame to play a different roster because it it was different to kind of the first one but yeah it, it would have been nice playing something else that wasn't a kind of like affiliation that I hadn't played already yeah. um, Amazing Spider-Man seems quite nice it's the first time I've played against them like on that day like uh, first time before that day that I'd actually played them yeah. um, so seeing what he can do it's kind of because I played Web Warriors a couple of times over the summer, but I just couldn't seem to get to grips with them. Um, but I don't know, like they seem to have got a few extra characters now that kind of give them a bit of extra. They, they definitely got a bit more flavor. They were they, they had a certain way of playing. I feel before Black Cat and Amazing Spider Man came out. Now they're there. They they give them a lot more flexibility yes. and a lot more options. Yeah. Um. So there you go. So you went three and zero. Oh. Three and so, well done. Very first tournament. Three and zero. I know. I was, I was kind of buzzing. I was like, "Well, that's nice." I've like never played Asgard properly before, so yeah, it was a kind of it was a great day overall. There we go. Um, how about yourself then? So that meant that either myself uh, or to my opponent was Ben uh, Clapperton. Um, so either one of us was going to be three and zero along with yourself. So. Um, he was running spider foes so he was the other spider foe player um, and he 
one priority, I believe, and he picked struggle for the cube. So he, when I spoke to him, so Ben had been posting quite a bit, been quite active on Facebook for the Northeast uh, Marvel Facebook page. Um, and I was talking to him and he was saying, well, this is actually only his fifth game. So he'd only played two oh, okay. um, before the tournament. And yet he'd gone two and now. So it was all, you know, well done. Spider Foe's working for you. Um, and I said, have you played Criminal Syndicate? So he said no. So I, I made sure I explained what they do because I didn't want any feel bads. Um, and I said, you know, for example, don't pick Legacy Virus into me because I can just, you know, I've played it twice and I, I can, you know, hand it off. Yeah. And he's like, all right, well, I've got Legacy Virus, so I won't do that. Um, so I'd explained it all. So he went with Secure's... Um, no, he went with extracts actually because he didn't want me to pick Legacy Virus, which sure. I kind of see. Um, I think with my extracts being so good for me, it it is a bit of a double edged sword. Um, yeah. So he picked uh, extracts and he got struggle for the cube. And I took Mephisk and we played at seventeen. So he ran Mysterio, uh, Venom, Green Goblin, Lizard and craven mm -hmm. um and i was running uh enchantress black cat taskmaster crossbones and kingpin um so i went up the left with taskmaster and kingpin against basically lizard and craven enchantress and black cat held the middle against venom and crossbones went across the right against green goblin and mysterio now mysterio wasn't able to make it onto the uh right objective so uh, crossbones took that i was able to completely take the the left one because it was two on two so i'm kind of double um and then black cat and enchantress were kind of just trying to hold off venom moving him back um, and stealing cubes um so i went into an early seven two lead um turn two I think Green Goblin came across and got involved. Well, one of the things he did was he put uh, Sinister Traps on my right hand extract, um, yep. which is really annoying because I'd lined up. So Crossbones has to be exactly lined up and he can double move and make it to the center, but only if he's exactly lined up. And I had Black Cat to go and take the extract. Crossbones was going to go get the secure. And then because he put um, the Sinister Traps there, there was a chance that he could daze Black Cat if you rolled all five. So I wanted crossbones to then detonate it because I didn't mind if he took some damage. Yeah. So he can reduce it and he you know he takes it quite well. Unfortunately, because of the straight line meant he wasn't within two and I did have that chance that I was like I could switch it over, get him to go get uh, the cube and get Black Cat to go take the secure. Um but I chose not to do it and I was quite glad uh, I think Black Cat just took two damage. Um, in the okay. end um, which meant that she had enough to go and steal a, uh, an extract off I think it was off Venom right. uh, so end of turn 2 again total dominance um, or with 15-3 at that point um, I was just able to keep hold of the uh, the two skewers even though they were moving around um, and able to withstand enough damage to, to stay alive. I think he managed to kill Enchantress in the end. Um, Black Cat had two uh, cubes on her, um, and she was about to die, um, and I just ran her away and hid her behind a size 4 truck. Um, okay. Kingpin was able to get the other cube and, and hang, hang fire there. Crossbones took a fair bit of damage, um, but he was he was all right, um, and then for the last turn, I just ran Black Cat into the corner because uh, she was worth two, and I only needed two. Um, yeah. And then we just slugged it out for the two um, secures. Kingpin was able to do enough on one side. Crossbones got dazed, so he took the one on the other side. Um, so it finished. Um, where did we finish in the end? He says quickly looking. Uh, it was 20 points to seven Okay. Uh, to myself. So again, a bit of a blowout, but 
you know, criminal syndicate on the right setup can can be a really tough matchup. Yeah. I, the way I play, I I need to win and win early. Um, I can't e- even though my characters are tanks generally. I can't last a long time because as soon as I get flipped, I'm then you're not. Yeah, you've not that. got your uh, crutch on the objectives. But in, in addition to that, the way I play is to not attack because it reduces the opponent's ability to get power, and then yeah. they can do less and they can do less damage to me, and so I can stay alive longer or not get pushed and thrown, etc. Um, so. What tends to happen is my characters start to get dazed and start to flip, but I'm not doing any damage to them, so they generally are okay. So if I do need to switch it up and try and go on the offensive, at that point I've got mainly dazed characters, yes, with a fair bit of power, but my opponent's fully healthy. Yeah. So, so. I, it, it's a it, it, quite often the games will get to the point where I race ahead, and then if I don't get it at that point. I could quite easily lose with not scoring any more points for the rest of the game and then my opponent catches up and overtakes me. Yeah. Um, so it feels a bit brutal, but it, it I have to win early or else they, they don't tend to, to last long enough. Um, so then we had awards. Mm-hmm. Um, we started with Best Painted, yeah. which we mentioned. So this is the first time they did Best Painted and... Um, Best ball. Um, um Best Painted was a three-way tie. Um, yeah. So we decided to do a dice-off. And I thought the dice-off was going to be the three players all rolled a dice and whoever got a crit won. That's what I thought, yeah. Um, but he just did one, two, three, four, five, six and rolled a d6. And it came up as number five. And he flipped a card and he said the winner was... Mr. Jim Charles. Um, <laughs> so congratulations on that. That Dumamu looked awesome. Um, and like I say, yours always really pop. Um, do on AOS, um, and they they do just as as much, if not more, on MCP. Well, I was going to say it's the, I think it's the first proper painting award I've won, so I might just retire now because it's all that I wanted in AOS, and I could never get it. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's no. Honestly, I was over the moon because he was kind of asking everyone, well, what should we do? And I just went, well, just let everyone win it, like because I didn't think there was a prize. Um, uh, I was just like, yeah, just let three people win it. If we've got like three joint things, then just just say we've all got it. Yeah. Right, but no, he wanted to do the roll off, so that was fine. And like, yeah, I ended up getting a little uh, Scarlet Witch uh, Funko Pop. So congratulations. That's now uh, sitting on my uh, on top of my cabinet alongside all my other trophies and awards from AOS. So there you go, pride of place. Yeah. Um, he didn't say who the other two were. So, so we'll never know. But um, congrats to whoever those they were as well. Yep. We then got to um, Best Sports. Yes. Sponsored by our good selves on Certainly. this podcast. Um, and that, I believe, went to Sean Asquith. Yes, it was. Yep. You got uh, um, three votes out of three, apparently. Well, there you go. I definitely voted for him in my game, so... He Excellent. definitely, I can confirm he definitely got one. Um, <laughs> uh, like I said, I played Sean once before. Uh, he's a really good guy, um, and and he plays the game in in the right way. Um, so yeah, no problem giving him my vote. So congratulations to him. And then we came to the big, the big prize, number the one, the winner. And this the... is where the controversy was. Yeah. <laughs> For... This podcast maybe didn't happen. Um, <laughs> so it was announced as I was the winner because I was at the top of the rankings um, and I was getting a lift from Mr. Fu himself. So yeah. once it was decided, um, there was a bit of a thing about trophies and pictures. Um, and I said, look, I've got to go. We'll, we'll sort that out later. That's fine. Um, and as I left, I noticed you saying that we were both on the same strength of schedule. Yeah. Which I, I don't think I'd properly realised um, until afterwards. And uh, You're right. Checked. We're both on strength of schedule 519. Yeah. So theoretically, we are tight. Now, Longshanks does, by default, 
the secondary tiebreaker is the rating. So I've got a higher rating than yourself because uh, I've got more games in long chunks. No other yeah. reason than that. Um, so it put me ahead of you. Um, so it it's a little bit odd because you know there's nothing separating us. So yeah, you look at are... the ranking like leaderboard and it says yeah. first Correct. first me you, but because you've got more games than long shanks, it put you above. Yes. That's right because that's why I queried JP. Like uh, I didn't want to feel like I was kind of complaining, but I was like, well, how did Martin win? And he went, well, he had the better strength of schedule. I was like, well, no, we've both got five one nine. He's like, well, no, he's got a better rating. I was like, well, yeah, that's overall Longshank's ranking. Like, it, it, yeah, it, it's a weird one to run it on because, yeah, you could have someone who's first ever tournament, never used Longshanks before. Yes, and, and it, it's nothing that you choose as an event organizer. So, you yeah. know, it's not it's the JP at all. At all. No. I'm going with that. It, it's just how it defaults. It is the same as what happened to anth when we were down in derby for board and swords yeah he um, was joint he was third, joint wasn't third. He? um and again because he hadn't played as many games in long shanks he ended up being put as the fourth um and missed out on the third prize um he has spoken to the i would say owners but the, you know the people that run long shanks and their initial response was to play the fourth round which I kind of understand, you know, um, but I realistically, kind... we don't do that in the UK so much. We do yeah, have tournaments I, that I kind of get why they it. say, oh, yeah, do the fourth round. But yeah, if you go to a tournament that's three rounds, you can't just go, oh, OK, we've got two people tied. We're going to play a fourth round because most people go out for a set time. Yes. I mean, and it... all of us at Warlords, bar Ant, have all got kids and wives and i think <laughs> just giving them a quick message i'm gonna be another hour and a half because we've got to play a fourth round now because two people are tied just doesn't really sit um yeah but... and it was interesting because before this one of the things jp had said was that we would play three unless we had too many people in case we play a fourth round and i said to him look for people traveling afar they need to know that it's happening. Know, there's no way yeah. we would go up to scotland to an event that we didn't know what time it would finish just yeah. because um so we agreed we'd do the three rounds so it was ironic that actually after this time we ended up with the, <laughs> the tie. A fourth round. um i think doing a fourth round is doable because i mean we didn't start the event until what was it 12 o'clock um it, it's probably past that by the time everyone arrived so we could easily start 10 o'clock and get two rounds in before lunch if jp like wanted to do four rounds yeah, yeah and, and i don't know what the circumstances are i know i was speaking to him before saying that you know opens at 11 and i don't know whether that's you know, oh the whole the, the limitations yeah. on it i think you know even if it did open at 11 if people were there at 11 sh- sharp we could get first game kicked off at something like quarter past 11 and just reduce the amount of time for lunch and then yeah. it could still be done by half six seven o'clock and get the fourth round in so it's definitely doable and next time i'm down i'll definitely talk to to him about it and see what, what we've kind of, done yeah but you know as i say the the one that Anth Paul did he ended up third joint third and that was a four game tournament yes it's going to sort out the winners at the yeah. very top but not necessarily Further all down. the way through the ladder yeah. so it it's just something to be aware of it, it is unfortunate that it's not like there's no tiebreakers there is a strength of schedule tiebreaker um the other obvious tiebreaker is um, margin of victory yeah but that's always a difficult one because of the fact that we don't play the same uh, yeah everyone's every time. scoring is completely yeah. different and you know and because i got to play deadly legacy virus twice um and, and my last one was a bit of a blowout i you know i, I worked it out and my um margin of victory was something like a third more than yours um right but i don't think that necessarily shows that I won by more just you know the crisis that we picked yeah um which is always a you know it's a difficult one so yeah i think it 
it's an interesting one. We'll see what they come back with. And if they do put an option as a second tiebreaker, it would be great. If not, then I think it just needs that announcement at the tournament that says what the, the secondary tiebreaker is if we need it. Um, and yeah. if it is going to be margin of victory, then whilst I'm not a massive fan of it, I'm not sure what else there is that you could do it off of, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit hard to calculate anything else because, it's, yeah, yeah, like I said, it's kind of down to long shanks of working out how everything works. And I mean, the fact that we've both got five one nine strength for schedule was a, a surprise. Um, but yeah, we literally played. I don't know, like they might be able to do extended, but I think extended built into extended built current... into this. Yeah, yeah. So this is. It's your opponent's strength of schedule. Tw- oh, your opponent's win rate plus your opponent's win rate plus your opponent's opponent's win rates all divided by three. So it's already take- baking that in. Yeah. So it, it shouldn't happen that often. I think it's just that with it being 12 players, it's like only just over the threshold of eight, which yes. automatically sorts it. Um, yeah. And then, but not really enough to get to the point where you've got enough going on below you to... <laughs> Yeah. Sort it out. Um, it it's just unfortunate that you know I really like the Longshank software, don't, and I feel like the, the two tournaments we've had with Visited Card Trader, it's ended we've up both causing, had issues with long, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it is it is what it is. But yeah, we're happy to say we're joint first. Finishing first is is, is good enough. Yeah, definitely. I was going to say um, first event. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to make sure I play a load of long shank games over the next few weeks. <laughs> Get that rating up. <laughs> no, I just, uh, no, it, it was, I mean, it was a really good event and yeah, like I said, to go free, no, I'm more than happy with. So, uh, no, congratulations. Thank you. That was the event. I am definitely going next month. Uh, I know you unfortunately are unable, unable to make it. Yeah, um, it's the wife's birthday, and I'm pretty sure I will get divorced if I go to an event instead. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. We'll let you off for this one. <laughs> um, but I know there are quite a few others coming. So if anybody's in the Northeast or anybody wants to travel up, um, get in contact um, I'll, I'll put the, the links in the show notes for the October 1, October the 16th great venue, great group of people, all really really friendly um, no no bad eggs there at all whatsoever, so come on up or down depending on where you are um, yep. and see if we can get to that magic 16 this time definitely Okay. so very quickly thank you very much for staying as long as you have done uh we did say this was going to be a long one um and we will very briefly cover changes or future plans shall we say future plans that's the best yes. way of saying it it's um, not changes no changes future plans so just briefly uh roster wise what tournaments events are coming up for you and what what are you thinking in there um so uh, real life tournaments Nothing in October, unless anyone wants to put something on the weekend of the 9th, then I'll be there. Uh, At this point, I'll travel anywhere, because it's the only weekend I've got. Uh, November, though, we are going to... We're going to Element Games on Friday the 13th. Yep. We're going to Tony Moore's Friday Night Marvel, so looking forward to that. And then we're travelling back, or or partly back, on the Friday night, and then we're going to stay in a hotel, and we're going to go to the Bidder Card Trader one on the 14th. I've got that right, or the 12th and 13th, it, whatever weekend that falls on yeah, in November. Friday and Saturday. Yeah, um, but I think I'm going to keep running Asgard at the minute. Um, really Enjoying enjoyed it. The kind of like I said, very like, very much like the playstyle I like. Um, I, I'm probably going to take. I mean, I am going to take Draw Marmu out because he was just more as a like I said, a bit of a fun piece if I didn't do very well with him. Um, I'll probably take Heller out because there's just not really a spot for her. It's the thing that we've talked about. And Asgard have got so many like four threat characters and five threat characters. It's it's kind of hard to go, oh, I really want to go with her instead of like Enchantress or, I mean, yes. even Loki I didn't even consider for any of the games. But yeah, I, I'm going to take a few characters out. I, I considered maybe putting probably taskmaster and maybe another two threat in there yeah. 
Just that's kind of... a good shell because it does give it allows you to stay Asgard without exactly all yeah. Asgard's in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know at the minute. It, it's I'm kind of holding off any of the new box any of the boxes uh, post Inhumans at the minute. I want to get everything painted. So I would love to say oh, I'll add like um, uh, heroes for hiring and stuff like that, but the, the fact is I just don't have the models. So we shall see. But I'm also doing season six tts league and so are you aren't you i am indeed yes yeah um so that should be fun i'm running asgard for that as well so cool. the only change i've made is i've taken tactical analysis out and put eyes on the prize in type, yep. team tactic card to interact within two and i took dormammu out and put baron zemo in just as a nice easy three yes um and some re-rolls as well which is always, always nice yeah um and then what else we're we doing? We're doing the new. Uh, I'm trying to think what it is. Rich Mid Gaming. Um, if you've not seen his YouTube channel, go on that. He does lots of battle reports and um, goes through like tier lists. He's running a TTS event, like testing some of the new rules. Yes. Um, so we've both signed up for that. So it should be quite fun to try. And I'm trying to think what else we've got. The bearded card trader is also starting a league, so I'm definitely going to sign up for that as well. Absolutely. Busy, busy. What changes are you making in yours, or are you kind of quite happy with your criminal syndicate at the minute? So I'm really sticking with Crimson. I, as you mentioned, doing the TTS league, and I've put Mysterio in there for a bit of an experimentation because um, I want to get him painted up because I love the model anyway, and I think yeah. he, he can bring some oddities to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Modoc went back in there uh, to replace Luke Cage. I think Mysterio went in to replace uh, Crossbones. Um, yep. And let's say we're doing the Experimental League. I'm doing the uh, October Bearded Car Trader. I'm yep. tempted to do one of the Dumamo OP events uh, that they're running there. So there's one at the start of the month and one at the end of the month. And yes. I am doing the Halloween special that Tony Moore's running up at Element Games. Yeah, it's uh, another one I can't make too, which I've got it at because it's 70 players or whatever it is he's up to at the minute. I think so. we're on 62. Uh, it's a yeah. 64 player in, uh, tournament. They're up to 62. Um, so yeah that should be absolutely fantastic uh, a great day out that will be um so yeah looking really looking forward to that it's going to be the biggest that we've done uh definitely i think it's probably the biggest marvel tournament in real life full stop in the world yeah i um, think it is yeah so that'll be fantastic to be involved with that we signed up to that really early on and i think there was only 16 when we signed up yes. and he just kept adding people on he said oh if there's a few people there's enough people we'll add on and uh, it clearly has so it's great to see that we can get up to 64 people playing um so well done there um so that's in real life for our gaming as such um and then for the podcast itself we're yes. gonna do more regular episodes we're, we're trying to commit to at least once every two weeks now Uh, We know it's been a bit ad hoc in the past, but as things are starting to return to some form of normality, we're getting out into more and more tournaments uh, and there's more things going on. Definitely looking to to go with more regular ones. Certainly. You mentioned earlier that on Tuesday we had a game where you ran your um, Guardians. That game was to an experiment, shall we say, to see if we could do a battle report. Mm-hmm. Technology did not work in our favour, <laughs> um, and I think we're going to try again. And yes. That's an unfair statement. Um, so bear with us. We are trying to make it work. If it doesn't work, so be it. Um, but what we're trying to do is make it so that we can do a report about a report that is interesting enough for you, the viewers, um, but it also doesn't take too much time for us to edit um, and doesn't. Yeah cause too much of a problem whilst playing we, we want to be able to play a game that we enjoy um, not doing it for the sake of doing a battle report and we also don't want to spend you know five six, six hours, hours yeah um editing chopping changing etc so <laughs> we're trying to get that that balance there's no point doing it if it's of no use for other people to watch and there's no point doing it if it's going to be a drain we want to be able to play games have fun and as a side product be able to put out battle reports that yeah you guys so, can watch and enjoy um we will try again and 
keep an eye on that on the YouTube channel, which was Tales of War Games. Um, I've started my painting videos again. Um, I kind of did a few over the summer and then took a bit of a break because I was just picking up random characters and it was uh, not disjointed, but I wanted a bit more structure. So what I'm going to be doing, and I launched released the Dormammu video at, on Monday. Um, I'm going to be doing all of the future releases so the kind of current month's releases as painting videos and then that way it's kind of a a gets me painting up the current releases so it means i'm not kind of worried about adding them to my backlog but b also kind of is quite time sensitive as well because i know certain um countries like don't get the releases so um, as early as the UK so it means that I can get them painted up and then when they launch in the US there's already videos out there to paint so and so so Dormammu is already out on mon uh, previous Monday uh, I'm planning to do Moon Knight and Blade this weekend so they're going to be out uh, next week um, and then it looks like that the Convocation launches are coming out next week or the week after so Absolutely. looks like a <laughs> need to get behind the camera for those as well so um yeah keep an eye out for all of that on the tales of war games youtube channel excellent in the, uh, coming weeks um and as you mentioned yeah the convocation looks like it's coming out so that'll be uh interesting to see because we still haven't seen the other side of their um leadership yes well their, their card that is the their leadership card leadership card yeah yep yeah, bit odd um and if you want to get some of those and your local game store doesn't stock them, go and check out Blackgate Games, our sponsors, as part of the Across the Nexus, by, Across the Bifrost Nexus. Um, go check them out. Great, great store, great discount, um, great service. Go, go check them out for your all your MCP needs if your local store doesn't have it. And on that note, we're going to be out of here. Thank you very much for sticking with us on this bumper episode. Um, and we will be back again soon. Take care. Bye. Good night.